what I'm going to do is I'm going to test race conditions to see how I can handle running many asynchronous functions at the same time and whether or not I want to wait for all the functions to finish running or I want to run my code as soon as the first function finishes running. There are options and methods in JavaScript that allow us to handle these race conditions. So first, I'm going to create a slow function that runs asynchronously and uses a callback first convention. And if it's successful, I want to return an ID, which means that I'm also going to pass in the ID when I create the function. And instead of having it run for just one second, I want to create a random time amount that it runs for from zero to three seconds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array of promises. I'm going to go around a for loop and I'm going to push three new promises into this array. So var prom is equal to new promise. It's going to return a resolve and reject. I'm going to run the slow function. I'm going to pass in the i value as an id. And then I'm going to handle the callback, error, response, All right, if error, I'm going to reject the error, else resolve the response. And I'm going to push this promise into the promises array, like that. Now, if I want to run this promises array, JavaScript provides us a very convenient method for handling all these promises. So on the promise constructor, I can access promise.all, which is a method that's going to take in an array of promises. I can then invoke all these promises using the then chaining method. So dot then, and that's going to return a response with an array of all the finished promises because dot all is going to wait for all of the promises to finish resolving. That means that if any of them reject, that's going to be caught inside of a catch block here. Dot, I can just console dot log the response. And so if I run this, Nope, can't call this error. I have to put null here so that there's no error. You can see it'll return 0, 1, 2. It's always going to return these in the correct order because it's going to wait for all of them to resolve and it's going to return them in the position that they were invoked. So if I want to trigger a random error in one of them, what I can do is Inside the callback here, if I return 0 or 1 randomly, I can get back an error or success depending on whether or not it's a 0 or 1. So I can just do math.round math.random. And this will return me 0 or 1 randomly. And if it's a 0, it'll trigger an error. And if it's a 1, it'll trigger a resolve. So now if I run promise.all, you can see that one got logged out that time because an error was caught. And we're only going to get the array logged out if all three promises return successful. Right? And there you could see that all three of them were successful at that time. If I don't need all of them to be successful, I can use a different method called promise.all settled. If I run all settled, 
this will return to us successful whether or not the status of the promise is fulfilled or rejected. So if I run this again, okay, this won't return us an error. And then I have, and then I have promise dot race, which will return to us the first promise that finishes running, whether or not it resolves successfully or it rejects an error. So if I run it, got an error, then I got a success, then I got a success, and this was from the second promise, not from the first promise. And this was from the success of the promise in the zero index. And these are all the ways that we can handle race conditions in JavaScript.